Well, we have got, okay, so we have um, Armand is here. He's doing, you know, he's got a different job now. Instead of being down there just kicking a can back and forth, he has to actually do something now as the county executive. And he's, he's doing a great job, and he's really reached out to us, and I'm, I'm thrilled with the relationship we have. We've got to improve it even more, Armin, I think. Um, Dalton here, Richard, and, and Todman, these guys are the professionals. They are the, they are the, uh, the heavy operators, the, um, the operating engineers. If they don't do their job, nothing works right, and they're all working, which is really great. And they're all middle class, and they're making money, and they're getting benefits, and that's great. And they're improving the state at the same time. Gail, I didn't know you were running that transportation committee. That was a big lift. Pat, Patman, we got you, all your bridges done, okay? And here's the thing that I, th and I want to talk about Jerry Ray in a little bit. I remember the turnpike exactly. I told Jerry on the way up here, I said, we're going to talk about a bridge, but we shouldn't be talking about a bridge. We should be talking about something bigger than the bridge. The bridge is only happening because of everything else. When we decided to sit down and think about the turnpike, there was a columnist up in Cleveland that wrote, this is the end of John Kasich. Now, I never read the column. Somebody told me about it, but I could care less. Um, well, it was ridiculous, and I can't figure out how all these governors sat there all these years without getting the value out of that turnpike. So we had scheduled this. I asked, I said, go out and check everything out. Figure out how we would take advantage of this. So they scheduled like this two-hour meeting. And there were three options. We could sell the turnpike, we could lease the turnpike, or we could maintain control of the turnpike and issue bonds against the tolls. So that meeting, which was scheduled for two hours, I think it lasted seven minutes. It wasn't a very hard decision. We get to keep the turnpike. Think about this. We get to keep the turnpike. We get to take value out of the turnpike because of its inherent worth. And we get an extra, at least an extra billion dollars to do infrastructure. So here's the question. Why did nobody do this before? Think about that. So we got all kinds of hassles. So I had to send people up here, go visit with all the mayors. They were all cranked up and upset. And all the public, you know, they, oh, my turnpike, you know, I... I'm married to this turnpike, you know, and I don't want anything to change. And um, so we just kept working, and the mayors began to understand it, and people up here began to calm down. And as a result, we got a billion more dollars without having to raise anybody's taxes, except a couple of those people that drive into Ohio and leave. They ought to be paying for the privilege of being in our state anyway, right? Um, so we got that money. And Jerry was able to take projects that were going to be done like in 20 years and move many of them into like a five-year window. And then he was uh, smart enough to come up with all this financing mechanisms, like you design it and you build it at like the same time and you figure out what you do with interest rates. So he squeezed more money out. And then, because we knew what we wanted to do, a bunch of other states were like sitting you know, sitting trying to think about things, and we got their money because they weren't ready to move, and we were ready to move. So we not only got the billion, we not only got efficiencies, one, two, but we check. got money that was supposed check, to go check, to other check. states. How much we got, Jerry? Check one, two, check, check, check. Oh, what would you say? How much cumulatively have we gotten from other states? Don't tell anybody. <laughs> about a half a billion dollars. This was money they were supposed to spend, and they couldn't figure out how to spend it. You ever imagine that? Bureaucrats who can't figure out how to spend money? So we got their money, and we've been spending it. Now, I just drove, I just drove from Cape Cod to Columbus, Ohio. Uh, and I drove. Uh, everybody was nervous, because I really don't drive that much anymore. Uh, <laughs> And hopefully when I'm done with this job, I'll get very well acquainted with Uber. Uh, but I had to drive the whole way. And there's no place like Ohio right now. You go over to Indiana, you go over to New York, you, I mean, I don't care where you go. You do not have the transportation system that we have in Ohio. And were there some orange barrels? Yes. 
Where is that thing, McAuliffe? Give me that phone, would you? So they got these guys down there at ODOT who sit in a room and they monitor traffic all over the state. And they got this thing, I don't know how many of you know about this, but nice glasses, McAuliffe. What do you think you are, a movie star? Um, this, is, this is called, oh, what is it, oh, oh go. And you look at this, this will tell you when you travel where is the best places to be, what's the speed, what can you expect. Now we're going to get to the point with technology where, you know, when you go, you have your GPS and all that kind of stuff, it kind of tells you the best way. But over time, the technology is going to be developed that's going to tell you, well, that may, be the, that may be the way you think you should go, but let me tell you about the traffic and let me redirect you. That's coming. And one of the things that I've told Jerry is I want innovation, progress, thinking outside the box. I don't want the same old, same old stuff. I want us to use all the technology we can think about. Autonomous cars. What is our role in autonomous cars? Jerry says, you mean I can go and tell the automakers that we want to work with them? I said, go tell anybody anything you want. Just think differently. And so we're thinking about all the ways in which we can incorporate technology and innovation into the Department of Transportation. And not just into the Department of Transportation, we are going to have a plan that's going to get everybody all shaken up again, that's going to try to bring technology to all, um, as many aspects of the government of the state of Ohio as we possibly can. Because we're not living in the 20th century anymore. We're in a 21st century, and you've got to move fast, you have to innovate, you have to think differently. So back to the turnpike for a second for all these young legislators like Patman and Gail Manning, or, you know, uh, uh, this young man over here who's, I, uh, which, who was your father? Jim. Okay. Um, we have, we, we want to make sure that these legislators, first of all, and I'm talking about Nick Celebrez, we don't want to run Ohio like it's a Republican club. I happen to be the leader. I'm a Republican, okay? But we want cooperation. People in this country are sick and tired of all the fighting. And that means we have to take risks. You know, we got to go out there and do things. And I can tell you on this turnpike thing, I know why they didn't ch change it for 30 or 40 years. Because politicians were afraid. They didn't want to make a decision. There was too much criticism. We can't live there. I said to Jerry, how are we doing with transportation? He goes, well, we're in the top 10. I said, you know what Tiger Woods says about finishing second? That's called the first loser. We don't want to be second on anything. We want to be first on everything as much as we possibly can. So this is really good. The people of the state ought to feel, they're, they're, Jerry, they're never going to care about who did this. They expect this. And Jerry, though, has been, you know, he's experienced. He's, uh, he's excited about things. And over the course of the next two and a half years, as time ticks down, we're going to ramp up. We're not going to ramp down, we're ramping up. Because we want to make sure we leave those who will come after us a game plan as to how this state can really thrive. I'm thrilled about the jobs, guys. You know, the, the men and the women that are working and what kind of money they make in a year. 50000 plus they get insurance, health care, a little bit of pension. Okay, I mean, those are the kinds of things that, that really matter. So, uh, and by the way, I know we got, I got friends here, AJ, got Norm here. You know, we are working all the time to figure out how we can make sure that our friends in the minority community are in a position of being able to get work. Uh, and that means the development of skills. And uh, we just had some legislation that passed the other day that got in the business of whether who gets hired in the cities or whatever. And I said to my folks, I won't sign that legislation unless I get a commitment from the operating engineers and everybody else involved in construction that there is going to be an active and aggressive me uh, effort made to recruit minorities into the business. And they wrote me the letter. And I know where you live, Topman. And you are going to keep that, that promise and that commitment because we want to grow members of our minority community. Now, we're going to have something coming out soon. It's going to get people stirred up.
and that is we don't want people to exist in the minority set aside for all of their lifetime. We want people to be in this thing, Armin, for a number of years. I forget the number we're going to set. They're figuring that out. And then we want to move them out and get new people in. I mean, we want to keep growing the number of minority businesses. And so that's going to get people stirred up, but I know I'll have your support, Armin, in doing that kind of thing. So anyway, for all of you that are here, I hope you're having a great summer. Uh, I am. We got great weather. I can't believe the, uh, I hope it lasts, what is it, six and a half games in front for the Indians. They're ready to start, I know. Cavs win the whole thing. And, uh, I don't know, are we predicting a Brown Super Bowl? <laughs> Hope springs eternal. Hey, God bless all of you. We'll keep playing.